I welcome everybody on the live stream. About 15 minutes until tip-off. That's why the ads were still on the TV, so don't get on Mike too hard. He's, he's on Johnny on the spot tonight. He just girls game went a little long, and we're about 15 minutes till tip-off. Hey, what's going on, Larry? We got the band rocking right next to us. Hey, a little extra free entertainment. <clears throat> About 10.30 until tip-off. So,
Sounds good. Welcome everybody on the live stream. Got quite a few viewers up already. We're about 9.58 until tip off or at least start and line up. So bear with us here. Welcome, everybody, to Butler Community College, where tonight St. Paul will take on Marine Academy, undefeated 24-0 Marine Academy. St. Paul comes in at 18-6. It'll be a tough matchup for the Indians tonight. They're going to be click have to be clicking on all cylinders here tonight to get past a very good Marine Academy team. But all in all, it is 0-0 right now. One loss, and you're gone. So tonight could be the night where the Indians put it all together. Play coming off a couple games, real good games beat Madison in the opening round 51 to 47 while I thought they played a superb game but shot 50 2 percent from the field and played real well Mike yeah it was a good game opening round it's been a good regional good end of the season good regional tournament and so far good sub-state tournament for the boys they've really been able to put things together and get things working like they want it to especially in that game against Madison on Thursday Dan you know they really showed some uh, character and stamina and able uh, an ability to come from behind they a little slow and sluggish in the first half and, and weren't getting things rolling real good, but that second half where they came from behind and got themselves a lead then were able to hang on to it, get out of there with a win. So here they find themselves on Saturday at Substate playing for a chance to go to the state tournament next week. Yeah, Brain Academy, is only it's kind of like a home game for them here at Butler Community College, only about 25 miles from El Dorado, a private Christian school just at El Bean, Kansas and uh, not too far away, so a good contingent on hand for them. They brought their band, and their band's yeah. pretty doggone good too, That's Mike. That's right. You may have noticed, got a little extra noise in the background, brought the band in, and they're right down the aisle from us, so you'll get front row seats for the band as well as the game tonight on the live stream. St. Paul, as I said, comes in at 18-6, and six, and about seven minutes until tip-off, and it'll be a good boys' action, we hope, here tonight. Uh, recap of last night's game where the Indian girls had a tough loss, Mike, against Hutch Christian. Hutch Christian just got defeated by Norwich, where it's kind of a tale of two tapes for Hutch Christian. Last night they couldn't miss anything, and tonight they only had 10 points at halftime. They really struggled from the fields as the Indians did last time. Mike, I was on the road a little bit today, and I was doing a lot of thinking about last night's game, and Indians shot 17 three-pointers, made one on the night. You know, if we'd only if we'd have shot tw if we'd have made 25% outside the arc, that'd have been a whole different ball game. The Indians could have won that game, but it just wasn't a good shoot night for the Indians. No, that's what you know, was their Achilles' heel last night. Just couldn't get anything to fall. It was like there was a lid on the basket. Just the whole game, it never got any better. Started out cold, and it never did heat up for them, especially the three pointers. Usually, uh, you're able to count on them, even if they're not completely cold. They'll make a few of those, and if they'd have made a few of them, could have made the difference. But, yeah, you mentioned it. I think the th only three-pointer they made in the game was the last one they tried late in the fourth quarter. They just weren't falling. Struggled a little bit on the free-throw line and just all over the floor offensively. Still played pretty good defensive game. They were able to give themselves some opportunities. Just couldn't make anything happen. The top scorer was Emily Hutcherson. She checked in with 11 points. She was the only Lady Indian in double digits last night. Effort wasn't a problem for the Lady Indians, nor has it been all year long. They're hustling in intensity all game long. They play that great man-to-man -man defense. It just wasn't to be. If you had a do-over or a mulligan, they sure would like to have it because they would like to play Hutch Christian again tonight. I predict there would be a different outcome. I think but you're ir right. Irregardless, it is what it is. We want to also congratulate the three seniors that ha are going to move on from St. Paul, Taylor Watrick, Emily Hutcherson, and Katie Coombs, who fell down or ha come down with the flu and wasn't able to attend last night's game so we wish her well at home hope she's feeling better today as we get set for boys action here tonight 
We're about five minutes from starting lineup. We're going to take a break. We're going to take a two-minute timeout. We'll be back with starting lineups up to this after this two-minute timeout. Let's St. Paul basketball and Hot 105. Turn it up here. Welcome back to Butler Community College here as St. Paul and Breen Academy finish up their warm-ups here out on the court. Mike, I mentioned the three girls seniors. We also have six boys that will be playing their final sub-state game tonight. Hopefully they get to move on to Dodge City, but all in all, we got nine basketball players moving out, but we got some new ones coming in. Yep, there'll be an opportunity to see what's coming in, too, because I uh, want to remind everyone, April 1st, they're going to hold the uh, preschool kindergarten roundup uh, getting ready for all the new kids who are going to get into preschool and kindergarten. If you have kindergarten age or preschool age kids, you can bring them to the roundup or schedule an appointment. That will be April 1st from 8 a.m. until 1 p.m. And parents can call the office at the school uh, and set up an appointment or get more information or details about that. But that's for sure what we need to look forward to is what we're going to have to fill them as they keep coming in, uh, you know, throughout the next generations, Dan. You bet. And, Mike, we also want to bring up that uh, tonight's game is being live streamed. That's extra sponsorship because every game with Keisha Cost in substate and state. Uh, Mike, you want to tell everybody how to get on that live stream? Yeah, just go to the KKOY website to get there. That's hot1055.net. That'll get to the KKOY website. Once you get there, scroll down the page. You'll see a big banner that says St. Paul Indians click on that it'll take you right to the youtube page there'll be a bunch of the games that they've played so far this season but right at the top of the list should be one of the little live box in the corner click on that box that'll take you to the live stream you get a live feed which you'll see on your screen right now as dan mentioned is our special sponsors that we have so we can bring you the live stream on the sub-state games I want to appreciate and make sure we thank all of our sponsors but especially those that have stepped up and done a little extra for the live stream we've got farmers bank with branches in Walnut, Hepler, St. Paul, and Girard. A brand new one over there in Girard. It's real nice, Dan. And then also Chris Den out of CD Electric, uh, helping out electrical contractors, the St. Paul Supermarket, and also Derailed Commodity, Flooring and Furniture. We really appreciate their support as well. You bet we sure do. Tonight, uh, I look for St. Paul. They need to turn the horses loose early here, let them out of the stable and run hard here. They are. My prediction is they need to get off to a good start here. They can't ill afford to get off to a bad start, so they can't play... Uh, they got to go right after and go against Breen Academy because Breen Academy is going to come right at you. Now, we watched one quarter of Breen Academy uh, Thursday night when we came. They played after us in the one quarter, and this is no exaggeration. I think I seen them miss one shot yeah. the whole first quarter, and it just wasn't one kid lighting up. They got a couple players that 
we're going to talk a lot about tonight. Um, there's one that averages quite a few points a game, but they was a pretty fluid ball team the other night, what we've seen in one quarter. But the Indians, they've been battle tested all year long, Mike. You know, you might look, well, the Indians got six losses. Well, those six losses have been against upper schools all year long. Yeah, and all those schools made the playoff or made substate. They were all playing in substate tournaments this week, too. You bet. So here we go with starting lineups. We're getting close to tip off. There's eight minutes on the clock. As soon as we get starting lineups here in a couple minutes, we're going to be off and running in this sub-state final between our own St. Paul Indians and the Marine Academy. What was the mascot, Mont? The Warriors. Uh, Warriors. Marine Academy Warriors. Thought they were playing our fight song there earlier, but I guess the Warriors probably got the same one we do for the chop. Yeah, probably so. Well, we'll just claim it. Like they <laughs> we'll use it. Well, they, they brought the band, we'll use them. They got some names here that it's a good thing it's on the radio because I'm sure I'm going to mispronounce them, but we're just going to go with it, whatever I call them, as we get start. Coach Watrick, longtime coach for the Indians, helped by Kevin Doherty, uh, been Keith's assistant ever since he started coaching a few years back, took the helm, done a really good job for these boys. For the Indians, senior. Mm -hmm. Caleb Lemons, number three, a 5'11 senior, is the first starter for the Indians for Breen Academy. Number 15, Jacob Landis, a 6'1 senior, gets a nod for Breen Academy. For St. Paul, number five, 6'3 senior, Hayden Smith. You know, you're always going to get what you get out of Hayden, and it's going to be 100% all yeah. the time. He plays hard, does a good job on the boards. Here's one to watch for Breen Academy. Number 23, Chase Weeby, a 6'1 junior. Number 23. Here comes the speed for the Indians with number 11, 5'10 senior Adam Albertini. Number 31, Zachary Coots, a six-foot senior for Marine Academy. And for the Indians, six-foot one senior. Number 15, a six-foot one senior, Easton Dent. Dent's been held pretty quiet the last few games. Let's look for him to open things up here tonight. Yeah, these teams really been working hard to shut him and down inside. So Mike, number 33 for Marine Academy, Zachary Duger, a six foot one senior, last starter for the Indians, number 24, six foot three senior, one of the two Bradshaw boys, Chandler Bradshaw. And for the Warriors, six foot one junior, number 43, Samuel Snook, six foot one junior for Berean Academy. St. Paul coached by head coach Keith Wartrick, assisted by Kevin Doherty and Nick Jackanaw, head coach Lewis Weeby, assistant coach Joel Stuckey for Marine Academy. Each team gathers around their respective coaches as they take the floor, and we are set for tip-off in boys' action here tonight, Mike. Yep, here we go. Winner going to state. This is what it's all about. It comes down to this here at Substate win or go home so we'll see how the boys can do hopefully they get off to a lead don't have to play catch up if anyone's coming from behind tonight we'll hope that it's marine academy now st paul trailed by as many as 13 against madison hamilton came back roaring back in that third period really start putting things together and then back and forth game they led in fourth quarter but never by any more than four and really took it home down the stretch and here's the tip off. The tip's going to be controlled by the Indians of St. Paul. Albertini with the basketball just underway here in this sub-state championship game between the Warriors and the Indians. Lemons with the basketball to his left. Kicks it over to Bradshaw. Bradshaw loses it for a second. Picks the dribble back up. Looks like a man-to-man -man defense applied by Berean Academy, the Warriors. Bradshaw with the basketball. Crosses over to his left. Kicks it out to Lemons. Lemons bounce pass over to Albertini, drives the baseline, thought about pulling up, feeds it into Smith, layup, good. <laughs> Indians lead two to nothing over the Warriors. Good patient offensive series there by Indians. Weeby with the basketball, kicks it over to the right wing to Coots. Now over to the corner to Duger. 
Back up to Weeby. Weeby drives the baseline against Albertini. All the way in, misses it, gets his own rebound. Put back, good, and fouled. Weeby will go to the line for the hand one for the Warriors. Score tied 2-2, two 7-0-4 two, left to go in the first. Weeby's the one to watch. They're well balanced, I think Breen Academy is, but Weeby is uh, definitely the point, point scorer from what I've heard. He makes the free throw and the Warriors lead 3-2. to two. Bradshaw with the basketball, dribbles to his left to the free throw line, pull up, jump shot, off, no good, Dent fights for it, brings down the rebound, spin move, left hand, left, good. Indians up by one, four to three. Good early start for the Indians. Good work on the boards. Weeby now down to the corner. Back up to Coots. Now pull up jump shot on the way. Off. No good, but nobody in there to rebound for the Indians. Put back good by number 43. Nobody on the board. Snook put it back in there for Marine Academy. They lead 5-4. to four. Bradshaw with the basketball. Indians got to do a better job on the boards. They don't want Breen Academy with more than one opportunity at the basket. You can't leave anybody that wide open. Bradshaw with it, into the lane he goes, kicks it out, three-point shot on the way by Albertini, long, no good. Smith fights for it, but it comes out to Breen Academy, to Koontz. Now to Weeby. Weeby against Albertini, into the lane, kicks it out to Koontz, down to the corner, all the way in, layup, no good. Rebound to Smith, gets it swatted away by Koontz. Now, back up top, three-point shot on the way, long, no good. Albertini fights for it. Now a whistle, who's it going to be on? They're going to call that on Adam, I believe. How's that on Albertini? There's both jumping for the basketball. That's a bad call. Goes against Albertini, his first, second team foul on the Indians. Weeby set to put the ball in play for the Warriors. Feeds it into number 15. Now Weeby with the basketball. Back up top to Landis. Landis floater in and out. No good, but he gets his own rebound. And now there's going to be a foul by Bradshaw. The Indians are getting tore up underneath the basket on the defensive end of the floor. They and Land- to do a better job. Landis is going to go to the free throw line to shoot two. That foul's on Chandler Bradshaw. Third team foul on the Indians. Landis misses the first. And he's got to do a better job putting the backside on the man. Second free throw rattles in. Six to four, Breen Academy. The Warriors up by two. 5.30 left to go in the first period. Aiden Smith off to Chandler Bradshaw. Bradshaw guarded on the right side. Dribbles into the free throw line. Pull up jump shot on the way. Short, no good. Weeby with the rebound. Got numbers, three on two opportunity into Coots. Coots into the lane, shot good. Eight to four, Warriors up by four. Albertini with the basketball. Feeds it into Smith. Smith into the lane, fouled on the hold. Fouls on number 33, Duger. Or Duggar. Indians basketball under their own rim, down by four. Five minutes left to go in the first. Chase Bradshaw checks in the game for Hayden Smith. First team foul on the Indians, first on Duggar. Albertini with the basketball, lobs it in over the top to Bradshaw. Bradshaw holds it out top, feeds it back to Lemons. Now they're going to call timeout as Albertini lost his shoe. So it'll be Indians basketball on the sideline, 4.54 left to go in the first. Warriors up by four. Four, eight to four. Bradshaw feeds it into Albertini. Albertini to the left. Now stolen by Weeby. Weeby all the way down, layup, no good, but they say he's fouled. He's going to go line to shoot two. They're going to call that on Chase, I believe. Chase Bradshaw? I don't think it's on Chase. It's It's on Chandler, his second. He can't afford to get in foul trouble for the Indians. Fourth team foul already on the Indians. Weeby goes the line to shoot two. They lead by four, eight to four. Weeby's first free throw right through there and good. Murillo comes into the game for Chandler Bradshaw. Picked up his second with 4.43 left to go in the first. Weeby at the line for his second. Warriors up nine to four. Second free throw on its way. Off, no good. 
Rebound comes out to Albertini for the Indians. And there's a foul on Weeby as he tries to swat it from behind from Albertini. That will be his first, team foul number two on the Warriors. Four forty left to go in the first. Indians down by five. Chase Bradshaw hands it back to Albertini. See with the Indians. See if Lemons can get to rolling here. Chase Bradshaw's ball feeds it back up top to Lemons. Lemons into the lane, loses it. Going to get called for the walk. He got hung up on his hip. Turnover goes back to the Warriors. Weeby with the basketball, 420 left to go in the first. Indians down by five, nine to four. Right wing over to Kuntz, back to Weeby at right wing. Shot on the way, layup, no good. Gets his own rebound, goes out of bounds. Now three pointer on the way, no good. Albertini, the only one seemed to be able to get a rebound for the Indians. He gets it off the backside rebound. Indians need to take advantage of this. Albertini with the basketball. Right wing over to Bradshaw, Chase Bradshaw. Bradshaw kicks it back to Albertini, looks inside for Dent, really working hard in there. Albertini drives the baseline, bounce pass over to Murillo. Murillo towards the top of the key, reverses it back, now tries to feed it into Dent, and he loses it, gets stole away. Weeby with the basketball for Marine Academy. They lead 9-4. to four. Back up top, driving in the lane is Duger, layup good, got right past Dent. Timeout, Coach Wartrick as the Indians down 7, 11 to 4. We'll be back after this 30-second timeout. You're listening to St. Paul Basketball on Hot 105. Make it a one-minute, please. Okay, okay. Full timeout, Coach Wartrick, St. Paul basketball out of the timeout. Indians now trail 11 to 4, 315 left to go in the first. Lemons with the basketball, dribbles to the left. Now in towards the elbow, three pointer on the way by Bradshaw, in and out, no good, just rims out. Rebound comes off to the Warriors. Weeby with it, feeds it down quickly. Outside the arc, now feed inside the Coots, turn around shot, gets it to go. Well, they got a good roll. Indians down nine, 13 to four. That was Snook doing some damage down underneath. Feet inside, to, stolen away by Kuntz. And Smith had it and lost it, lost it off his hands, and Kuntz steals it. Right back down comes Hoover with it, hands it off to Weeby. Indians in a zone now, in a 3-2 zone by the Indians. Into the lane, shot by Landis on its way, no good. Smith with the rebound. 13 to four, in his trail by nine to 18, left to go here in the first. Man-to-man -man defense by the Warriors of Breen Academy. Lemons with the basketball up top to Dent. Off to Albertini. Albertini guarded by Weeby. Feeds it up to Bradshaw. Chase Bradshaw, off to Dent. Indians being very patient here. Dent dribbles with his left and right hand a couple times, kicks it up top to Lemons, 149 left to go in the first, 13 to four, nine point lead for Marine Academy. And that's gonna be a hold, a foul on number 15 Lan uh, Landis, the 6'1 senior, just the third team foul on the Warriors. That was on 35, Timken. Huh. 35 on 30, that must've been away from the ball or something. 
Blake Timken. He wasn't even the one guarding Lemons. Albertini set to put the ball in play. Count is on. They feed it into Dent. Dent feeds it back to Albertini. Albertini into the lane, loses it, and it's going to be a foul. And that's going to be on number 31, Coots. I don't know if that's going to send, that's going to send Albertini to the line to shoot two. So opportunity for Adam to get a couple from the free throw line here as he settles in for his first with 135 left to go in the first. Indians trail 13 to four. Albertini's first one right through there. Didn't have a lot of chances at the free throw line on Thursday, so they really need to make him count tonight. Albertini lines up for a second. It's on its way. Short, no good. Rebound comes out to the Warriors. Koontz with it down to the corner to Timken. Landis to Koontz. Now a pass inside, kicks it out. Three pointer on the way. No good. And that's going to be an over the back call on the Warriors. On number 15, Landis. Fifth team foul on the Warriors. First on Landis. 13 to 5. Indians down by 8. 113 left to go in the first. It's going to be a long game for Adam Albertini yes, and is. Caleb Lemons. They're not going to have, able, have any breaks. Albertini over to Lemons. Three pointer on the oh. way off the iron. No good. Rebound comes out to Marine Academy. Cross court pass. Three pointer by Landis. Good. 16 to 5, 11 point lead for Breen Academy. Indians can't connect from the outside and it turns into a three on the transition. Albertini rode like a mule all the way to the rim, can't get it to go. Rebound to Breen Academy. Two on one, three on one opportunity. All the way to the rim, layup, good. All of a sudden it's a 13 point lead for the Indians. Indian look a little gassed right now with 23 seconds left to go into first. Up by 13's Berean Academy against the Indians. Lemons with the basketball. Indians going to settle for a, a last shot here. Lemons towards the lane. Kicks it out. Long three-pointer by oh. Albertini. Way off. No good. Cooch tries to save it in. It does. Feeds it into Weeby. Shot at the buzzer. Short. No good. And at the end of the first, Berean Academy up 13, 18 to 5. We'll be back after this one-minute timeout. The St. Paul basketball and hot 105. Welcome back. Hopefully it's tell two quarters here and the Indians can get back in this. They trail by 13 and start the second quarter. Landis with the ball, cross court pass. Back to number 33, thought about the three, passed on it, drives inside. Now gets it poked away and comes back to him. Luckily cross court pass over to Weeby, down to the corner to Kuntz, back to Weeby. Weeby cross court pass to Landis, inside to Kuntz, shot on the way, no good. Boy, they got to do better. Get their own rebound. The Indians not putting a backside on anyone. Drives the baseline, kicks it out, three-pointer on the way. No good. Still a rebounder. Good Indians Greece. in a zone defense and can't get a rebound. Now Weeby with a three. He misses it. And this time Hayden Smith finally reels it in. I think the Indians need to go back to a man. Yeah. Chandler Bradshaw back into the game for the Indians. He's been held awful quiet here tonight so far. Hopefully he can open things up here in the second period. Dent with the basketball, a couple ball fakes, and they're going to call him with oh, a walk. Travel, yeah. Turnover gives it right back 
to the Warriors. Indians need to settle down now. 7-0-1, left to go in the second. Indians down by 13, 18 to five. Kind of an extended zone that's really getting everybody out high so we don't have any rebounders left in there. Weeby pull up floater on the way, no good. Coots right there with the putback, no good. And it's a foul on Smith. Got position on the down low guy on the backside. And he's gonna go line to shoot two. Indians not good, doing a good job of limiting Breen Academy to one shot on an offensive possession by getting the rebound. Most of the time it's been two and three shots at the yeah. basket. As Koontz misses That's his Snook first. There at the line. 43. Snook at the line. Second free throw rattles in. It's good. 19 to 5, 14 point lead for Breen Academy. Wide open three point shot for Bradshaw. Long, no good. Rebound to Breen Academy. Weeby, well, that's a carry, and it is a carry on Weeby. Good pressure defense by Lemons. Gets a turnover against Marine Academy. Much needed one. Indians over. Must have watched exactly. the girls' game last <laughs> They're night. They're not exactly very hot shooting, for sure. Uh, over from the outside. Need to get things rolling here. Can't be unlucky two nights in a row, can we? Lemons rifles it down to Albertini. Off to Bradshaw. Bradshaw into the line. Pull up. Floater. Short. No good. Rebound. Green Academy. Now the Indians doing just the opposite. Or the Warriors doing just the opposite. Indians. It's one shot. They get a defensive rebound. Back down they come. Landis with the basketball. And that's going to be a foul on Lemons. 16 foul on the Indians. Lemons got caught in the air. Hit Landis on the head. Weeby with the basketball guarded by Lemons, or well, zone defense, but all the way down to the corner. Now a rifle inside now to Snook. Snook, and it's going to hit the out-of-bounds line, and it's going to be a turnover against the Warriors and goes back to the Indians. Well, the Warriors got a lot of ball movement just all over the floor down there on the offensive end. Indians not moving much in that 3-2, and they're just rifling around yeah. the outside and whipping it on the inside. Albertini with it, feeds it off to Bradshaw. Bradshaw back to Albertini into Lemons. Lemons loses it. Ball's loose. He chases it down. Need to reset here. Lemons with the basketball. And he's going to get called for the carry. And another turnover on Indians. Give it right back to the Warriors. A little frustration going on with the Indians here. Need to settle down. Warriors basketball in his trail by 14, 19 to five. Right wing off to Koontz. Back to Koontz, cross court pass now down to the corner. Can't see who has it. Koontz up to Weeby, off to number 33, Duggar. Duggar into the lane, gets it swatted away by Smith, out to Lemons. 5.13 left to go in the second. Indians down by 14. Just five points and a quarter and a half for the Indians. Bradshaw into the lane. Kicks it off to Smith. Smith all the way into the rim. No good. Dent with the putback. Good. <laughs> Offensive board for the Indians. They're down by 12. 4.54. Left to go in the second. It's like a 1-3-1. One, Three-pointer three on the way by Landis. In and out. Albertini gets fouled. And that's going to be the 16 foul on the Warriors. And sub into the game for each team. Chase Bradshaw in for the Indians. Number 25, Hoover in for the Warriors. Hayden Smith out of the game. Chase Bradshaw into the game. Also in for the Warriors. Number 35, Timpkin, like the bearing, back in. Albertini with the basketball, 19 to seven, 12 point lead for the Warriors. Indians need to try to chip away with this. Feed inside to Bradshaw, back out to Albertini. Three pointer on the way, no good long. Chase Bradshaw chases it, but can't get it. Weeby with the rebound. The Indians still over from outside the arc. Looked like he traveled, got away with it. Now almost a steal by Albertini. Gets it off to Landis, jump shot on the way. No good, that's an over the back call. 
but it's out of bounds on number 51 who's in the game, Thiessen, a 6'4 sophomore for the Warriors. Indians have opportunity to chip away here, Mike, but they just can't hit a shot yeah, from the there's outside. Some, there's some bad juju floating around in here, I think. 19 to 7, just seven points. 4.04 left to go here in the second period. So far, the Indians have done a better job defensively holding the Warriors in this quarter, but offensively, they just can't get in going. Albertini with the jump shot on the way, gets it to go. From the free throw line, 19 to 9, 10 point lead for the Warriors. Coach Watrick livid because he's screaming for a timeout for the inbound the ball, and the ref just not even looking at him. Finally looked at him like, oh, didn't see you. Yeah. Cross court pass all the way over, almost threw it out of bounds. Landis back to Weeby. Back to Weeby. Whipping the ball around against this zone is the Warriors. Wide open. Nope, drives into the lane. Shot on the way. Short, no good. Indians got away with a little bit of a shove. Rebound to the Warriors. Back to Landis, three-pointer on the way, off, no good. This time, good block out by the Indians, and they get the rebound. Ten-point lead for the Warriors. Bradshaw kicks it, no, loses it, gets it stolen away, and it comes back to the Warriors. Weeby with it, feeds it ahead, nobody back, and it goes out of bounds off of 51, Thiessen's fingertips. Chandler Bradshaw out of the game. Indians hands on hips. East and back and forth. East and Dents logged a lot of minutes here. Lemons with his hands on his knees. Need to cut it out here. Keep chipping away. 255 to get into halftime here. Chip away at this lead. Albertini to Bradshaw. Bradshaw to Albertini. Lob inside the dent. Dent. Almost gets it stripped away. Now he's in a little trouble. Feeds it off to Chase Bradshaw, up top to Lemons. Lemons bounce pass into Hayden Smith. In traffic, he's going to get called for the walk, as he did. Lemons has got that one-handed pass. He's thrown it three or four times now. It's making me nervous. I wish he had been a little better control. So another turnover on Indians. They've held the Warriors to one point in this quarter, but the Warriors also playing pretty good defense, too. Landis with the bat. He walked and got away with it. Weeby off to number 25. I think it's Hoover. Now almost goes out of bounds. Weeby chases it down with his speed back up to Landis. Now down to the corner. Cross court pass. Up to Weeby. Off to the right wing. Floater on the way off the backboard. No good. Hoover, or excuse me. That is. What number is that? Snook, 43, with the rebound. He's been a machine in there rebounding. Offensive rebound boards for Snook, and he's going to go to the line to shoot two. That's first on Chase Bradshaw. And he makes the Indians pay for not blocking out and makes his first free throw, 20 to 9, back up to 11-point lead. Boy, the Indians have had opportunities to chip into this lead. Just can't get anything going offensively. 21 to nine. Albertini brings the ball down. 155 left to go in the second. 12 point lead for the Warriors. Long three pointer by Lemons. Good! Finally, the Indians break the ice. That's what Lemons' problem was. He was shooting too close earlier. He needs to stay outside. Timeout, Warriors. 21 to 12, nine point lead for the Warriors. 30 second timeout. We'll go ahead and stay here, Mike. It's been a pretty good ball game. The Warriors, everything they're cracked up to be, but the Indians' defense kind of cooled them off here in the second quarter, but the Warriors' defense has also cooled the Indians. The difference in the game, in my opinion, so far has been the offensive rebounds by Berean Academy. Yeah, that is, I think, what the difference is, Dan. St. Paul is not able to get any position under the basket, or else if they do have position, they're letting Berean Academy just step in front of them, get some of those rebounds. You know, St. Paul cold from outside, only making one three-pointers, but if you look across the score sheet, at Berean Academy, they've only made one themselves. They just had better position on rebounds and getting better position or tr points off the uh, transitions. Indians used to coming from behind. They just don't want to dig this hole too deep. Right. keep chipping away at it. They trail by nine to the Warriors. Landis up top. Now Weeby with it. And they really fire the ball around the outside. Cross court to Landis. Indians stay in a two-three zone. Now Weeby turn around. Floater on the way. In and out. No good. Smith with the rebound. Feeds it off to Albertini. 
Albertini turns on the gas, loses it for a minute, hands it off to Bradshaw. Bradshaw, long three-pointer, good! Something we need to happen. 21-15, six-point lead for Berean Academy. 1-10 left to go into second. Indians trying to claw their way back into this one. Weeby off to Coots, back to Weeby. Back to Coots, down the corner to Landis, back to Weeby. Down to the corner to Landis, 50 seconds left to go. Right wing, back to Landis at right wing. Cross court pass over to Weeby. Weeby thought about the three. Now he's bumped by Bradshaw, drives the baseline underneath the basket, bounce pass over, kicks it out, whips it around. Here's a three pointer on the way. No good, rebound Dent. That shot put up by Coots. And then a steal by Breen Academy, shot up, no good. Adam Albertini with the rebound. Oh, he tried to whip it across, got it stolen. And now Weeby's going to slow things down with 18 seconds. Adam Albertini tried to whip it across to Lemons on the fast break and gets the pass stolen away. 12 seconds left in the quarter, down to the corner. Back up top to Weeby, to Hoover. Three-pointer on the way, good. Bradshaw heaves it at the buzzer, and it hits the roof. And right back up to a nine-point lead as Hoover made the Indians pay off the turnover and the Indians trail 24 to 15 here at halftime. We'll be back with your halftime show after this two minute timeout. You're listening to St. Paul Basketball on Hot 105. Yeah, it did. Was trying to claw our way back in it. Welcome back, 24 to 15. Marine Academy leads the Indian of St. Paul by nine. Not going over, uh, just glancing at the score sheet here, Mike. The Indians shooting 40% from the field. That's not great, but it's not horrible. They've held Marine Academy to shoot 27% from the field. The problem is if they've been out rebounded by right. about eight rebounds, and they also have eight steals compared to three, or eight turnovers compared to three Berean Academy, and it's just been more possessions for Berean Academy in that first half. Yeah, that's exactly what the problem is. Marine Academy playing almost the same game as St. Paul. They're just making better of it when they have the ball. That's the difference in the game is, that, you know, that, so St. Paul's got a chance here in the second half. You know, they're only down nine, and we've definitely seen them throughout the year show the ability to come back. They'll come out here, if my guess is right, we've seen it last time when, on Thursday. And also before, Adam Albertini going to take the load on his shoulders. We'll look for him to come out here and really th try to get things fired up. And if he does that, he's been known to be a spark plug. Once he gets things started, everyone else kind of jumps on the wagon and down the hill they come. 
Seven offensive rebound by Breen Academy, just one for the Indians, eight defensively for Breen Academy, and then the Indians at nine defensive rebounds. So, so far the difference in this game has been rebounds and turnovers has been the difference in scoring. That really hurt. Indians had a chance on a fast break opportunity with less than 30 seconds left to cut into that six point lead. Instead, Albertini tried to cut it, throw it across lane to the Lemons on the fast break. It got stolen by Breen Academy and that swung back into a three point shot at the prep before the buzzer at halftime, Mike. Yeah, that's one of the things when they come back out, uh, they're having some problems with those passes, you know, the, little bit I wouldn't call them lazy they're just not aggressive on their pass you can tell the difference in the way they throw the ball compared to what you see Breen Academy who's just whipping the ball around uh, you know really good hard strong passes and St. Paul on the other hand they try to sneak it through some gaps that maybe aren't there or rush some of those passes so if they can clean that up and eliminate those turnovers and, and give themselves a better chance to shoot yeah you've been wise to dribble that out um, had a little bit of a run going there got that down to six and you're under a minute left to go in the quarter actually less than 30 seconds left to go in yeah. before halftime you know dribble it out set your offense out go for a last shot and be happy to cut that 13 point lead down to maybe four but instead it ran right back up to nine but the indians they can play with breen academy here they just got to make some adjustments here at halftime do a better job on the boards we're going to take another timeout when we come back from this timeout mike's going to have all the individual first game first half stats for you we'll be back after this two minute timeout this is st paul basketball and hot 105 Well, welcome back. 3-11 left to go here before the start of the third quarter. Mike, you want to run down scoring? Yeah, limited to 15 points in the first half, so not a lot of scoring going on by the Indians. But they were led by Easton Dent, who's got four points. He was perfect two for two. When he had the opportunity to shoot, he was making them. So four points in the first half by Easton. You had Chase Bradshaw, Caleb Lemons, and Adam Albertini had three points apiece. Albertini with one of the uh, one free throw, he was one for two, and then one of two, a two-point range, 0 for three, though, outside the arc, so Adam needs to try to get dialed in outside there. Caleb Lemons, one of two, outside the arc, though, he's starting to get it going, as was Chase Bradshaw, who was one for three. He also had Hayden Smith, came in, he started the game strong, and had, he was one for two inside, had two points in the first half, so 15 points, we've seen him score a lot more than that, but they've kept the uh, Marine Academy within range here at the nine point down by nine here at half Dan. Yeah, the individual that sticks out to me is uh, Chandler Bradshaw. Been playing awful good lately. He's 0 for 3 from the yeah. field. Got 2,000 that first quarter, so he set quite a bit towards the end of that first quarter and the second quarter, but he's been held quiet here tonight. 
as well as quite a few of the Indians. Indians playing hard to see if they can put a second half together to get them back into the game here. Did a little better job blocking out. They got into that 1-3-1 zone, and I'm not really a 1-3-1 zone fan very much, Mike. It doesn't, it kind of opens you up to that offensive rebounds with just one guy down low and three in the middle when you're trying to close out against them threes against a very good Marine Academy shooting team. Yeah, that's right. And also, there wasn't a lot of fouls called. Well, there was fouls called, but it's kind of spread around. Nobody in real foul trouble for the Indians. Chandler Bradshaw, you mentioned, with two fouls. Easton Dent, Albertini, Hayden Smith, uh, Caleb Lemons, and Chase Bradshaw have one apiece, so no one in real foul trouble for St. Paul. Same story for Marine Academy. Spread them out. Duggar has two fouls. Everyone else has one, so no one in real foul trouble. 105. Let's go for tip-off here in the second period. We'll be back after this 30-second timeout. You're listening to St. Paul basketball on Hot 105. Welcome back. Indians trail 24 to 15 down by nine. It got this down to six. It's going to be Marine Academy's basketball. No, it's going to be Indians basketball. Try this into the court. See if the basket's a little bit bigger around <coughs> down here. Maybe Mike. That's uh, got to change. Got to get better for him down here. We'll see. As we are set to get underway as they finish running the clock out here and get eight minutes on it. Albertini is going to be set to put the ball in play. For the Indians. Let's get off to a good start here, boys. Lemons with the basketball for the Indians. Man-to-man -man defense for the Warriors of Breen Academy. Left wing off Chandler Bradshaw. Screen set by Smith. Bradshaw, top of the arc, drives into the lane. Pulls up, jump shot on the way, and he gets called for a charge and picks up his third on a player control right at the start of the third period. So not a good start for the Indians. Not real smart for Chandler. Warrior defender was set. Chandler just drove in there amongst that and that's gonna bring him right out of the game. So he's not gonna do much scoring from the bench. Third no. foul, first foul on the Indians. He'll be all right here, set for a couple minutes. Got a couple more. Weeby with the basketball. One, three, one zone applied by the Indians. Back up top to Weeby, over to Kuntz. Weeby is a whip it around the horn. Left wing, number 33. Duggar, three-pointer on the way, good. Oh, in and out. That was all but down by Landis. Albertini with it, right wing up top to Lemons. Lemons off to Chase Bradshaw, left wing. He dribbles, a couple dribbles to his right, kicks it off, and he's gonna get whistled for the walk. And another turnover gives it right back to the Warriors, 7.09 left to go here in the third. Warriors basketball, they lead by nine. Weeby with the basketball. Sluggish start to the third quarter for the Indians. Right wing to Landis. Now up to Weeby. Weeby to Coots, three-pointer on the way by Coots. Off, no good. Albertini tries to chase it down, but it's chased down by the Warriors. Now Weeby with the three-pointer, off, no good. Rebound comes out to Hayden Smith. He drops it off to Albertini. 24-19, Albertini bump, no call now. Long three-pointer by Lemons, good! Boy, Lemons shot that one from clear out by the football field, Dan. That was a heck of a shot. Back down to a six-point lead for the Warriors. Landis to Duger, to Landis to Duger. That was a walk and he gets whistled for it. Yes, he drug his foot. Turnover gives it right back to the Indians. Make a little run here, boys. Need Lemons to get things started. Lemons off to Albertini. 6-16 left to go in the third. 24-18, six-point lead for the Warriors. Lemons with the basketball off to Chase Bradshaw, right wing. Bradshaw holds it, kicks it off to Albertini. Almost a five-second call on Bradshaw. Albertini to his right, cut off. Tries to feed it in the den in the traffic and it's stolen by 
Snook. Beat ahead to Landis. Now Snook with it. No good on the shot. Bradshaw to rebound. Bradshaw's going to bring the ball across to half court for the Indians. 24-18 still. Six-point lead for the Warriors. Lemons holds it up above the timeline. To his left. Bumped. It's going to be a foul on number 33. Duggar. Well, it was almost like Lemons just set him up for that one, Dan. It's not two different players on the floor. Sometimes I call him Duggar. Sometimes I call him <laughs> Duggar. It's number 31. It's his third. Zachary Duggar, the 6'1 senior. First team foul the second half on the Warriors. 529 left to go in the third. 24 to 18. Six point lead for Marine Academy. Lemons with it. Need to drive against that zone. Bradshaw with it. Feeds it back to Lemons. Into the lane. Kicks it to Albertini. Three pointer on the way, but he walked with it. Didn't have his feet set anyway. Travel gives it right back to the Warriors. Adam lost the handle on it. He got kind of hung up in between steps. Got whistled for the travel. 505 let's go into third, 24 to 18. Weeby with it. Down to the corner to Landis. Back to Weeby. Weeby drives in, kicks it off. Down to the corner, three-pointer on the way, off, no good. Albertini fights for it on the backside. He comes down the right side of the court, numbers back, into the lane he goes, loses it, shot up, no good. They're gonna call it on the floor anyway. St. Paul basketball under the rim as Albertini took it right at him. Adam set to put the ball in play under the Indians basketball to the scorer's table. Timpkin back into the game for the Warriors. Albertini looking to get it into somebody. Finally feeds it into Lemons. Lemons gets Boy, that's a good pass. bad pass. Snook with the steal all the way down. Euro step layup good. Indians three possessions to get this down under six and have three turnovers on three consecutive. Possessions, pull up jump shot by Lemons, off, no good. Hayden Smith with rebound, putbacks no good, but he's fouled. So back up to an eight point lead for the Warriors. Every time the Indians get within six, they get ahead of themselves. And they've had three pretty bad looking possessions in a row. Now Smith at the line to shoot two. First one on its way, short, off, no good. You know that foul was on Weeby, Dan. That's his third, so three fouls on Weeby. And Duger. Three, yep. three Tim team fouls on the Warriors, one on the Indians in the third. Smith's second free throw off, no good. Rebound as Smith misses a most out to Hoover. Hoover to Weeby. They leave him in the game. See if the Indians can take it at him and get a fourth on him. He's been held pretty quiet so far tonight. Out. Side cross court pass to Weeby. I thought Adam had a shot at it. three pointer on the way off. No good. Rebound to Adam Albertini. Now Albertini streaks all the way down. Layup. Good. Went right past everybody and scores. Get it back down to six. 26 to 20. 348 left to go here in the third. Weeby with it. Off to Koontz. Koontz to Timken into Snook, back out to Weeby, loses it for a minute, pulls it back in. Weeby didn't want to get that fourth foul, so he kind of let Adam, long three-pointer by Weeby, short, no good. Albertini with the rebound. Could have got whistle for a travel. Adam down to the elbow, kicks it to Smith, layup, no good. Dent chases it down. That's going to be out on the Indians as Easton going all out for the basketball as Hayden Smith's layup just rims out and it stays a six-point lead for the Warriors of Breen Academy. That was a tough shot to make going in there that hard and that far into the basket, so it was a good well, touch by Hayden. It's not quite light enough. Landis back in for Weeby and also Chase Bradshaw into the game for Hayden Smith. Coots with the basketball to Landis, to Timpkin, cross-court pass back to Coots, to Landis, to Coots, to Landon. Right wing all the way down. Can't keep up with the passes. Off to number two. Oh, left him open backside. And, uh, no good on the shot. And Dent with a rebound. Got a break there. 
Lob into Chandler Bradshaw, and he gets on the board and scores. It's a four-point ball game. Timeout, Marine Academy, as the Indians on a run here with 2.47 left to go in the third, as the lead is now 26-22, four-point lead for the Warriors. We'll be back after this 30-second timeout. You're St. Paul basketball on Hot 105. Welcome back, Landis to Timken to Snook. Snook at the baseline, cross-court pass, three-point shot on the way, off, no good. Rebound, Dent fights for it, rips it down. That shot was Adam Albertini with the basketball, pulls it back out, now up to the free throw line, kicks it off to Bradshaw, Bradshaw inside, no good on the shot. Snook with the rebound as Bradshaw misses a little bunny shot in front of the rim. 26-22, four-point lead for the Warriors. Landis with the basketball. Right wing over to Hoover. Back up top, Landis. Kicks it around to Timpkin, back to Landis to Timpkin. Cross-court pass over to Hoover. Whip inside, Timpkin tries to weak side. Ball gets loose, but it comes back to Breen Academy. Three-point shot on the way by Breen Academy. Off, no good, rebound comes out to Landis. Looked like he walked, got away with it. Off the corner, Timpkin. Man, they ripped the ball around, now knocked out of bounds by Chase Bradshaw. That did look like it was tipped by the Warriors. Yeah, they really, that ball's moving. The Warriors got a break there because Bradshaw did hit it, but I think it got tipped out. They stick with the call. We be back into the game for the Warriors. Four-point lead for the Warriors, 125 left to go here in the third. Cross-court pass all the way over to Duggar. Over to Weeby at the baseline. Shot up on its way, no good. Albertini skies for the rebound. Albertini all the way down, tries to cross-court pass again. Stolen away. Got here comes Weeby with the basketball, kicks it out. Three-pointer on the way. In and out, no good. Rebound to the Warriors. Weeby with it, he fires up a three, no good. The rebound to the Warriors. Weeby again, wide open, fakes the three this time. Indians need to get an offensive rebound. Another three-pointer on the way, this time it's good. Well, you give them three shots at it, they finally made one. Back up to a seven-point lead. Indians fight so hard to get back in it. All the way to the rim, and he loses it. Turnover, a feet ahead to the Warriors. Shot up, layup, good. 31-22, back up by nine is the Warriors. Albertini with the ball, 15 seconds left to go. Lemons lost it going to the rim, lost it between his legs. Tried to save it back in bounds, saved it right to the Warriors. Chase Bradshaw to his left, that's gonna be a foul on Landis. Fourth team foul with 4.7 seconds left. The Indians fought so hard to get that down to four. And after three offensive rebounds in a row, four three-pointers, the Warriors finally get one to go and they make them pay. He called that foul on Coots. Number 31 with the foul, Zachary Coots, the six-foot senior. Easton Dent back in the game for the Indians. He's gonna check in for Adam Albertini to give him a 4.7 second breather. <laughs> Chase Bradshaw set to put the ball in play with five seconds 
Look for an inbounds play to Chandler here. Feed into Dent. Three seconds, two seconds. Dent loses it. Landis fires up a three at the buzzer. No good. And at the end of three, back up by nine is the Warriors. 31-22 will be back at this one-minute timeout. Let's St. Paul basketball and hot 105. Welcome back to Butler Community College, 31-22. Warriors up by nine with possession of the basketball going into fourth quarter. That's four-point ball game with about a minute and a half to go. Three-pointer on the way, way long, no good. Ball's loose on the floor. And who's it? Oh, uh, come on. They called off the Eastern then, I think. Out on the Indians. Looked like it was out on Coots as he was diving after the basketball. Indians not able to secure another off or defensive rebound. So it's another offensive rebound for the Warriors. Lob in over the top, shot up good, right off the inbound. And up by 11 are the Warriors. Lemons with the basketball. Albertini stays on the bench, try to give him a little breather. Pull up jump shot by Lemons, well short, no good. Be who's that going to be on? That's going to be on Boy, Marine Academy, be. the Warriors. Yeah. On number 33. Duggar, that's his four. Duggar, he picked up his fourth, 15 foul on the Warriors as Snook checks back in. See how long Coach Watrick elects to leave Adam on the bench to get a little breather here. Bradshaw feeds it to Bradshaw. Come on, Chandler, get going here. Chandler kicks it up top to Chase. Chase to his right. Picks up his dribble, kicks it back up to Chandler. 7-16 left to go in the game. Indians down by 11. Lemons with it, guarded by man-to-man -man defense by Weeby and Landis with a steal all the way down. Layup, good. He's got it picked right out from his hands. Got to Chandler Bradshaw him. back down with the basketball to Indians. Left wing now all of a sudden they're down by 13 after fighting so hard to get this within four about two minutes ago. Just knocked out of bounds by Weeby. Bradshaw tried to fire it over to Lemons, who was standing over there. Adam Albertini back in the game for Chase, no, excuse me, for Hayden Smith. Bradshaw feeds it into Albertini. 6.43 left to go in the game. Indians really need to get rolling here quickly. Albertini with it. Kicks it to Bradshaw, three-pointer on the way, off, long, no good. And it's going to be a jump ball. Good, good play. hands in there by Easton Dent. And possession arrow towards the Indians of St. Paul. That was a good heads-up play by Easton Dent. He just stepped in there and grabbed a hold of it while the other two uh, players were fighting for it. 35-22. Lobbying over the top to Chase Bradshaw. Kicks it off to Albertini. Albertini into Bradshaw. Bradshaw floater on the way. No good long. Rebound to Snook. Chandler having a hard time finding his rhythm here tonight. Stuck on two points and just not looking near as fluid as he has the last few games so far. Weeby faked the three. Now it's going to be a foul on Lemons. Just the second team foul on the third period on the Indians. And Caleb Lemon's second foul. It'll stay Warriors basketball under their own basket. Weeby set to put the ball in play. Right wing back to Weeby. Lob inside. 
up and under shot on its way, blocked by well, Dent. Play, Albertini Dent. with it. Tries to feed it ahead to Bradshaw. He chases it down before it goes out of bounds. Then he steps on the corner. Boy, they just, they get an opportunity and they just give it up that quick. Turnover gives it right back to the Warriors. 5.55 left to go in the game. 35-22, 13-point lead. Weeby with the basketball. Right wing over to Hoover. Back up top to Weeby. Kicks it to Landis. Back over to Kuntz. To Landis. Lob inside to Snook. Up and under on Dent. Shot up. No good. Rebound or tie up between Weeby and Chase Bradshaw. Chase Bradshaw upset with himself. He had position to get the rebound. Let Weeby get his hands in there and get a hand on it. I don't think that was Weeby, though. I think that was Hoover. Weeby set to put the ball in play for the Warriors. Kick out. Two-point shot on the way. No good. Dent chases it down. Feeds it to Chandler Bradshaw. 5.30 left to go in the game. Three-pointer by Lemons. Short. No good. Rebound to Berean Academy. 5.16 left to go. 35-22, 13-point deficit. The Indians ice cold in this quarter in the first three minutes of the quarter. Hoover with it. Inside. Crazy shot up and in there and he gets it to go. Weedy. Kind of just reached around under the basket, flipped it up, and now all of a sudden it's a 15 point lead, 37 to 22. Chandler Bradshaw with the basketball. Feeds it to Dent down towards the baseline. Dent pull up jump shot, no good, long, no rebounders in there for any Indians, nobody in there. He gets it off the Weeby. 4.30 left to go in the game, 37 to 22. Hoover or Koontz with it. Feeds it back up to Weeby. Back to Koontz. Round on the back side. Three-pointer on the way by Landis. Good. Timeout. St. Paul. 4.13 left to go in the game. And all of a sudden, the Warriors up by 18. We'll be back after this 30-second timeout. Let's St. Paul basketball and hot 105. Well, welcome back. All of a sudden, the Indians trail by 18 with 4.13 left to go in the game. The turning point in this game was about less than a minute left to go in the third. The Indians had the lead down to four. And the Indians turn it over. And on the next possession by Berean Academy, they got a three, had shot four threes, got three offensive rebounds, and they finally made him pay on the fourth. And that kind of awoke the sleeping giant as Albertini goes all the way to the rim and score. Seems like that awoke the offense of Breen Academy, and they've been lights out here early on this fourth period. Yeah, they Mike. sure have. They've been whipping the ball around, and really, as far as the fourth quarter goes, just really dominated this quarter. But it hasn't been that way the whole game. St. Paul's had their opportunities to do something, but Breen Academy just taking over here in the end of the I game. I believe the score at that point in time was 26 to 22. So the Indians give up 18 in the first quarter right. and eight in the next two quarters with about a mon- minute left, and then in that third and then since then they have rattled off 14 more points to make it 40 to 24 and the Indians since that point in time they just scored two points since a minute left in the third period and we're halfway to the fourth so only two points in the first half of the fourth quarter exactly the opposite of what they need to get going here they got four minutes left to play to either try to advance to the state championship tournament bracket in Dodge City or this could be the six seniors last game see what they can reel off here stranger things has happened with 403 left to go in the game I can guarantee you one thing they're not going to give up they're not going to give up a little four-court pressure by the Indians a little trap here coming by the Indians 
out to Landis. Landis passes on the three, kicks it back up top to Weeby. Indians have to come out and do man to man. Poked out of bounds by Hayden Smith. It'll stay with Marine Academy. So the Indians call timeout. They come out of that zone because they have to go into a man to man. They only have two team fouls, so they need to be aggressive here right up on them. Weeby with the basketball. Kind of swats Albertini's hands away. Now Coots with it, gets it poked away by Bradshaw. And back off to Weeby. Weeby, right wing over to Coots. Back up top to Weeby. 327 left to go in the game. Indians need to get up on him. Now Weeby to the basket, kicks it out, pass on the three. Now into lane is Coots to Snook. He puts up the shot, no good. Dent blocks it. Adam Albertini with the rebound. There's a reach foul, and that's the sixth team foul on Breen Academy. That's going to be on Jonathan Hoover, the 6'3 junior. And the first foul on him. Lemons with the basketball off the inbounds. Three minutes left to go in the game. So that's time to be Down patient, by man. 16. Bradshaw kicks it off to Lemons, long three-pointer, top of the key, short, no good, rebound to Weeby. Albertini picks him up, 255 left to go in the game, 16-point lead for Breen Academy. They look to try to stay undefeated here and try to advance to get a real high seed in the state tournament. Very patient here, 239 left. Just two team fouls on the Indians. They really need to be up on them, face guarding, doing everything they can. There's a backdoor cut, but they kick it out. Now to Snook. Snook kicks it out to Weeby. Indians out of gas here. Weeby to the lane. Layup no good. Slapped around. Bradshaw comes down with it. Somebody's hurt down for Barine Academy. I think it's Snook. Three-pointer by Albertini. No good. Now they whistle it dead. As I believe it's Snook down on the other end on the ground, nobody, no coach even going out there yet. Now he gets up off the ground. It looks like he might have banged up his left ankle. We don't want him, wish him the best there. He's played a heck of a game, man. He's been an animal down he on the has. inside on all pitch rebound. He there fighting with Dent all night long. Off the miss by Albertini. It's gonna go right back to Breen Academy. Indians jump into a little four court pressure. Poor old Adam don't have any gas left in the tank, Mike. He's wore clear out. Yeah. That's not because he's been sitting on the bench, sipping on water. He's been giving it his all on his last game here. Looks to be his last game. Shot at the rim, no good. That's going to send Duggar to the line to shoot two with two minutes left to go in the game. They've been running hard all night long in that zone defense. Give him a little bit of a, bre of a rest, but that man's got him moving all the time now with no relief. They were expended a lot of energy. Get that lead back, yeah. the, the Warriors lead back down to four. And if they could have kept cutting into that, you know the old adrenaline would take you a long way, you but when all of a sudden it goes from four up to 13, it, <laughs> uh, it's like pulling the plug. It's like pulling the drain plug out of the bathtub. Oh, we got six guys on the court. Albertini had to come out of the game. Shot by or Duger, free throw on the way, no good. That's over the back. How is that not over the back? Bradshaw with a rebound. Chandler been held off of quite just two points on the night. Inside to Chase. Chase drives the baseline, loses his footing. Must be slick spot down there. Hayden Smith with it. Smith's the defender. Shot up. Good. Oh, good. good. Move, Hands by Hayden Smith, staying in there. Timeout, Coach Wattrick will be back after this 30-second timeout. You're on St. Paul Basketball on Hot 105. Make it a one-minute, please.
Welcome back. 144 left to go in the game. Indians trail by 14, 40 to 26. The Indians has gave the Warriors of Breen Academy everything they wanted here tonight. Just had a little glitch in the first part of that fourth period. Full court pressure applied by the Indians. Here comes a double team. They whip it ahead to Landis. Cross court pass. Back up to Koontz. Now down to the corner, and there's a foul on Duggar. The fourth team foul on the Indians. Indians got a long ways to go getting a one and one. Just the fourth team foul on the Indians. Indians done a good job staying out of foul trouble. Third foul on Easton Dent. Inbounds to Weeby. Albertini fouls him. Fifth team foul on the Indians. How many is that on Adam? Two. Just the second on Albertini. Somebody besides Chandler Bradshaw needs to be to make sure the one foul. If they can't steal the inbounds. Right. A little trouble. Now, there's a foul on Chase Bradshaw. Sixth team foul on the Indians. 125 left to go in the game. Sixth team foul. Second on Chase Bradshaw. Next one puts him in the one and one. Throw it in the back counter. Weeby. He He's not Weeby. the right guy to foul. <laughs> Adam lets him bring it across to half court. Gets up tight on him. He gets past him. Uh, wrong guy. Don't get him fouled. They need to let it back in the hands of 33. Coach Wartrick desperately wants him to let 33 have the ball and foul him. That looked like a walk by Weeby. Got away with it. Landis down to the corner. Now they're just going to send. They finally foul Landis. Third foul on Albertini. These yep. six seniors, Easton Dent, Caleb Lemons, Chandler, and Chase Bradshaw, Adam Albertini, have been fun to watch, Mike. They have been a lot of fun to watch, and they've been great leaders for these younger guys all the way through high school. There's nobody going to outwork them. There's nobody logged more minutes on the floor than Caleb Lemons and Adam Albertini all year long. Yep. Really, six, maybe seven-man rotation for the most part all year long. And... Thursday night, Saturday night game, and poor old Adams just plumb out of gas yes, as well yes. as Lemons, and you could kind of tell it into that fourth quarter. They expended so much energy trying to get back in it. Lemons to the rim, gets a block, wow. no foul. He ends up on the floor. Dent with a putback. It's good. 42 to 28. Landis with it. Back to Weeby. 30 if the Indians just let him run it out, or if they elect to fall, and the Indians are going to back the out. Indians going to back off of him. And Marine Academy is going to stay undefeated and advance to the Dodge City Tournament. Well deserved. They're an awful good ball team. The Indians did a great job of holding them awful quiet for three and a half quarters. They let them get a pretty good run that first quarter, but for the next, I should say, the next two quarters, they did an awesome job holding Marine Academy. They just couldn't, didn't quite have enough for them. A little deeper rotation by Marine Academy, and that's going to be ball game. The St. Paul Indians. It's going to finish the season at 17 or 18 and 7 and be substate runner up. We'll be back with your final game stats after this two minute timeout. You're with St. Paul basketball and Hot 105.
Well, welcome back. Indians fall short here, 42 to 28 to the Warriors of Marine Academy. Good game put together by the Indians, just didn't quite have enough for Marine Academy to really run out of gas down the stretch. Mike, you want to run down scoring? Yeah, they got out, they got ran out of gas, but they also turned the ball over too much to get them through this game, Dan. And uh, scoring wise for the Indians, though, they were led as usual, or as a lot of times by seniors. This time, Adam Albertini out front with seven, followed though by Caleb Lemons, who had six points for the Indians. Hayden Smith kicked in four. Uh, excuse me, Easton Den also had six for the Indians, and Hayden Smith with four. Chase Bradshaw had three, and Chandler Bradshaw was just two points. So Chandler a little bit cold tonight, but it wasn't for lack of effort because the effort was there from not only the seniors, but all of the Indians that got a chance on the floor. There was for sure no lack of effort. Everyone gave 100%. Just wasn't meant to be, and, and things just didn't go their way uh, when they needed them to, Dan. Yeah, when Chandler picked up that second foul in the first quarter, had to go to the bench, and he picked him up early on in that first period, not the second quarter, the first period, Picked him up early on, had to go to the bench. He never did really get a chance to get in rhythm and uh, just never did really get in rhythm. Um, the Indians, you know, at first struggled mightily from outside the arc, kind of warmed up, shot decent, but they just got rebound, out-rebounded real yeah. bad by Breen Academy. They shot a better shoot percentage at Breen Academy. Breen Academy just had many more opportunities, many more shots at the basket than the Indians of St. Paul. All in all, great season put together by Coach Watrick and the Indians, nothing to hang your hat about. There's a reason Marine Academy is 24-0. That's right. You have sub-state runner-up, like you said, nothing to be uh, down about. A lot of teams that are sitting at home listening to us on the radio or the live stream. And so congratulations to the boys and the girls both for a really good season and fine performances this year. It's been a lot of fun and, and it enjoyed the whole season with them. And, Mike, what an awesome leadership group we have as a senior class. We had the pleasure of taking the radio station, interview them on, yeah. for a pre-recorded uh, in the studio with Larry on uh, senior night, played it before senior night, but Chase and Chandler Bradshaw, Caleb Lindemans, Hayden Smith, Adam Albertini, Easton Dent, Taylor Watrick, Katie Coombs, and Emily Hutcherson. What a great group of nine leaders to really show these young Indians how to play the game, how to work hard. Yeah, they're going to be missed, but it's also exciting to see what's coming up with next year and the years to come, and, you know, the legacy continues, and we'll be ready for them next year. I want to thank Mike. Sticking with us all year long, Mike. I had a lot of fun with you. Yeah, appreciate it, Dan. The best play-by-play -play man in the state of Kansas. I've said it before. I'll say it again. It's a pleasure always being here with you. And it's the best one in Butler Community College at the <laughs> moment because it's the only one here, Mike. Yeah, I want to thank you. I, too, want to thank Larry. I want to thank Ross Albertini and uh, Seth Bourne filling in a couple times when I had to be gone. And so uh, it's, it's nice that we got everyone working together, and it's just been a lot of fun. That's a lot of fun watching the Indians. And as Mike said, I want to thank Larry back in the studio. No better way to play Saturday night than listening to the That's Indians right. on the radio on Hot 105. Well, it's been a fun season, folks. Indians fall short here in Substate. Going to bring a little hardware home, just not the hardware they wanted. Substate runner up. And the uh, Lady Indians losing last night, so the Indians knocked out of the tournament. Any area teams in Southeast Kansas is left in it. We wish them all the luck in the world. It's been a fun season. And I'm going to sign off here. You've been listening to St. Paul Indian Basketball on Hot 105.